This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So in this particular part we are going to study about the stress strain curve. See the relation between the stress and strain for a given material under tensile stress can be found experimentally. Okay. In a standard test of tensile properties, for example, as we considered a cylinder or a wire, when, when we stretch, the length of that particular cylinder or wire will increase by the applied force. So, the fractional change in length and the applied force needed to cause the strain are recorded. So, the fractional change in length that is nothing but the strain delta L by L as well as uh, the applied force will record these two. Okay, the applied force which are needed to cause the strain are recorded. The applied force is gradually increased in steps and the change in length is noted. So, we will start with the smaller force and then uh, we will go on increasing the force and then we will record the, no, the strain. A graph is plotted between stress which is uh, equal in magnitude to the applied force per unit area and the strain produced. You can see that graph. This is a graph of stress and the strain. So the stress is nothing but uh, the applied force per unit area, isn't it? Yeah. Analogous graphs for compression and even for shear stress may also be obtained. This is for the what we have considered tensile stress. Okay, the stress strain curves may vary from material to material. Obviously, it uh, varies from material to material. So, this uh, graph or the curve helps us to understand the how a given material deforms with increasing loads. See, from this graph we can see here the region between O to A, this one, the region from this point O to A, the curve is linear, isn't it? means for a smaller change means uh, for the smaller deformation this stress is directly proportional to strain isn't it this is hooke's law the body regains its original dimensions when the applied force is removed in this region the solid behaves as an elastic body okay it obeys the Hooke's law and the body will, uh, re, you know, it regain its original shape whenever the applied force is removed and this is called as, uh, here the body shows elastic behavior. Okay, then the region from A to B, you can see here, the region from A to B, stress and strain are not proportional here. Nevertheless, the body is still returns to its original dimension when the load is removed. So, even though they are not proportional in this particular case, it will regain its original shape whenever the applied force is removed. The point B in the curve is known as heel point, elastic limit or heel point, means up to here it will obey that elastic property of the body. So, it's only we will call it as elastic limit. Okay. So, and the corresponding stress is known as healed strength of the material. Okay. So, if the load is increased further, if we increase the load further, the stress developed exceeds the healed strength and strain increases rapidly even for a small change in the stress. 
you can see that okay the strain increases rapidly even for a small change in the stress so the portion of the curve between b and d shows this from b to d this rapid change we can see here see when the load is removed in this particular region say at point c okay between b and d the body does not regain its original dimension here once even the applied force is removed the body will not gain its original shape so in this case even when the stress is zero the strain is not zero so the material is said to have a permanent deformation or a permanent set so here it is called as plastic deformation and the point d this point d on the graph is the ultimate tensile strength of the material this is the ultimate tensile strength of the material so beyond this point after d this additional strain is produced even by a reduced applied force and a fracture occurs at e if you continue increasing the yeah stress or even for a reduced uh, applied force uh, the uh, strain increases rapidly and even the, it may end up in a fracture if the ultimate strength and the fracture points d and e are close the material is said to be brittle okay if for d and e if e is somewhere here then its tensile strength is very much uh, low it, it the material we call it as brittle if they are far apart then it is ductile so as uh, the stress strain behavior varies from material to material isn't it for example rubber can be pulled to several times its original length and it still returns to its original shape okay it varies from material to material if you take the material you can stretch it uh, very long and even though at a very high uh, you know if you apply very high force and if you stretch it and whenever you leave that again it will come back to its original position isn't it so you can see in this figure this is the stress strain curve for the elastic tissue of aorta the large tube or the vessel which is carrying blood from the heart this is the stress strain curve which is carrying the okay blood from the heart so although elastic region is very large in this case the material does not obey hooke's law over most of the region so there is no well defined plastic region in this particular case there is no well defined plastic region so substances like this uh, tissue of aorta rubber which can be stretched to cause large strains are called as elastomers so these rubbers and this tissue they there can be stretched isn't it to cause large strains
so this type of materials we call it the elastomers example is this rubber as well as tissue of arota okay so now we are going to study about the elastic moduli okay see the proportional region within the elastic limit of uh, stress and strain so in the figure that we you know saw the region or the curve oa so is of great importance for uh, structural as well as manufacturing engineering designs so the ratio of stress and strain we call it as modulus of elasticity okay and it is the characteristic of the material modulus of elasticity it is the characteristic of the material that is nothing but the ratio of stress to the strain so this is one of the important characteristic of the material okay so now let us study what is ens modulus see experimental observations show that for a given material the magnitude of the strain produced is the same whether the stress is tensile or compressive so the ratio of this tensile stress to the longitudinal strain is defined as ens modulus okay the ratio of tensile stress you know stress to the longitudinal strain is defined as ens modulus it is denoted by the symbol y so we can write it as y is equal to this longitudinal strain is uh, epsilon and tensile stress we can write this tensile stress as restoring force per unit area and the longitudinal strain is change in length to the original length isn't it so we can write it as f cross l divided by a cross delta l since strain is a dimensionless quality the unit of ens modulus is same as that of stress so that is uh, nothing but newton per meter square or pascal is the unit so the table here it gives the values of ens moduli and heel strengths of some materials okay so in this uh, table it is noticed that for metals ens moduli is very large you can see here for copper it is 110 for iron it is 190 steel 200 so for metals it is uh, very high 
to increase the length of a thin steel wire of 0.1 cm square okay cross sectional area 0.1 percent a force of 2000 newton is required okay the force required to produce the same strain in aluminium brass copper wires having the same cross sectional area are 690 newton 900 newton and 1100 newton respectively which means that steel is more elastic than copper brass and aluminium so it is for this reason that steel is preferred in heavy duty machines and in structural designs okay wood bone concrete and glass they are all having a very small length moduli 